How's it going everybody? This is Chad from Vintage Space and we are go for a launch and learn. This is going to be the premiere episode of a launch and learn. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this game going here for Kerbal Space Program 2 Early Access. So basically what a launch and learn is is that we build a vintage historical rocket in Kerbal Space Program 2 and while I build the rocket I will tell a little bit of some historical facts and specifications of the rocket uh, just so you guys you know learn about uh, the rockets that we do build here in Kerbal Space Program 2. I'm gonna get started with the first rocket of the series which is the Redstone Missile. We have an unmanned control pod here. Okay let's go ahead and start with creating the nose cone here. We're gonna go into our payload section here. Go ahead and choose the small fairing. And the history of the Redstone Missile did start in uh, 1944. Uh, it starts with the Ordnance Department uh, and General Electric. Uh, they were wanting to create a contract to develop long-range missiles uh, to be used against ground targets on high-altitude aircraft. Now, the uh, below the net, the nose cone here, uh, there's not a fuel tank, but there's just some kind of an empty... Uh, uh, just empty area. I want to simulate that by doing another fairing shroud, but we're going to have to place this upside down so that we can create a connection node down here. So, we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, it does taper a little bit like this. And we'll go ahead and set that. So General Electric on June 19th of 1946 began a feasibility study uh, for the base early basis of the Redstone missile research. I'm going to go ahead and uh, start with the fuel tanks. Uh, let's just place two of these right next to it. Um, we're going to figure out what's the issue here. I'm going to go ahead and just stick the fuel tank stack inside. This is probably not historically accurate, but this will work for the meantime. We will now create uh, a little bit more of the fuel tanks. It's just a one-stage rocket, uh, the Redstone Missile. Uh, specifically, we're actually going to be building the PGM-11 Redstone. Uh, this was actually launched in 1958. And then we're going to place another one of these. Just kind of change the uh, black there just to give it some variance and let's go ahead and place an engine below that all right it's looking pretty good um, I think we could extend the fuel tanks a little bit longer there we go uh, but before I do that I actually want to continue the bulkhead here. We'll go ahead and continue the payload. Let's go ahead and place another payload fairing below that and just meet that up with this section right here. So in 1953 uh, the first Redstone research and development missile was flight tested. And also, in that same year, the, they had their first successful launch. And let's hit the step plus here. Uh, and then just to continue bringing this up here. And we'll stop about r just right there. And we'll close that in. Complete it. And we'll put the engine below that. And check our engineer's report to make sure that this is getting fuel because sometimes I know in Kerbal Space Program 1 placing a payload fairing like that would block the fuel flow. Okay, um, the last thing we need to do is build the fins on the bottom. That's going to be quite the challenge because the game doesn't have the exact fins. We're going to do symmetry of four here.
There we go. We'll tighten that up a little bit. We're going to use the move tool right down here and move the fin so that the bottoms match where the engine is. And then I got to just do a little bit uh, more adjustment as we've got a little bit too big of a length here. Just gotta play around with these a little bit just to see what we can do. And use the move tool again. Doesn't seem to wanna grab the fins anymore. And then on the end, we will put the little square portions. All right, so the next uh, section we're gonna do are the fins. We're gonna place four of these on there like that. Um, I'm gonna try to get them to look uh, just like what the redstone missile has. Uh, they're pretty tricky to make. They, they're, they have a long base, but they are really shallow. We're just going to reduce the wingspan. There we go. Perfect. All right, let's now add uh, the little square pieces on the ends. Those were actually the control surfaces of these fins here. We're gonna go ahead and use these extra small stabilizer here. And we'll, we'll just adjust these until uh, we get something that's square. There we go. Now we just need to change the angle a little bit. There we go. Awesome. A redstone missile. We're going to take this out on the launch pad right now. Um, I'm going to make sure the staging is correct here. All the interstated shrouds and stuff like that. There, and there's the engine. This is a very simple rocket. Um, it's actually 63 feet tall, feet five feet diameter, and had a range of 200 to 250 miles. Now, in 1955, uh, Chrysler Corporation received the first industrial contract for this Redstone, and it became fully operation became fully operational in 1958 to pave the way for the Redstone Mercury, which was a spacecraft payload version of the missile, which of course carried the first American to space. All right, this thing is taking off like a beast. And as this thing is uh, ascending, I just kind of want to finish off with uh, a last historical fact about the Redstone Missile. Uh, in January 16, 1959, NASA issued a request to ABMA for eight Redstone Missiles to be used in Project Mercury, and that paved the way for our American space program that was run by NASA.
All right, um, that's gonna do it for this video. We do have finally a successful, a fully successful rocket launch. And I hope you guys learned a lot. Um, I had fun doing this as much as you guys had fun watching this. All right, um, well, uh, until next time, I will see you guys out on the launch pad.